Welcome back, everyone. This is Thomas Triple T time with another new bullish crypto analysis. Before we dig in and take a look at the uh, Ethereum weekly analysis, remember this is for entertainment only and not to be considered as financial advice. Additionally, when you feel like value's been added, and if you want to help out uh, with the YouTube algorithm to spread my analysis to other people, especially newbies. Uh, feel free to smash the like, ring my bell, hit subscribe if you haven't, and share your thoughts in the comment section. Let's dig into the news first, and then we'll go through the uh, charts. Um, let me get my mouse highlighted on. So, um, there is an article in Fortune.com um, that I thought was pretty interesting. And in there, they talked about uh, Lido. Oh, Lido, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, Lido Finance, um, let's, before I talk about Lido, let's talk a little bit about how um, as Ethereum migrates from um, proof of work to proof of stake, in proof of stake uh, for Ethereum, you need a minimum of 32 Ether or $98,000 to achieve val uh, validator eligibility. Now, if you're a, a, a minnow or if you're a shrimp and you don't have a lot of ETH, uh, then how do you participate in uh, in staking? Well, what you can do is there's this company called Lido or Lido. I'm going to say Lido going forward. What they allow people to do is contribute whatever fractional amount they have, whether it's one Ether, two Ether, a fraction of an Ether, or however much they uh, they have. And with that, once they get a block of 32 Ethers, they give the funds to a service that they trust to set up a valid, 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 <laughs> validator. And so, and then you would get a portion of however much you contribute for your number or, or amount of Ether. So you're thinking, oh, that's a pretty good idea. It is. It's an excellent idea. Now, the challenge, though, Lido has become so popular that they've become the largest staker on the Beacon chain to date, with 30% of all staking activities. So right now, of the $35 billion that uh, total staked on the Beacon chain, Lido accounts for $10 billion. So other competitors have seen this work out really well, and... Um, and they're getting into the game too, but Lido still owns 90% of the liquid staking market. So that is, um, and so if one entity becomes so dominant and that they control um, the vast amount of um, staking, then you, the, the blockchain then faces a 51% um, attack. So... I think it's a fabulous business idea, but it also creates um, some issues. And this has been uh, talked about, but give it a read. I'll include the uh, link to uh, in my uh, Twitter thread for this video. The uh, last story I want to talk about is uh, from Decrypt.co. And uh, uh, it mentioned, um, it talked about Jack Dorsey and how Jack Dorsey is known to be a Bitcoin maximalists, and uh, there was a, a tweet thread that went um, that started with uh, Vitalik, and um, and then it well it, it got anyways it got to uh, Jack involved, and they got this other person involved, Deso, uh, Deso Protocol, and basically <laughs> Jack said that. Um, that Ethereum has many single points of failure, and um, so he just not he just not um, <laughs> he's just not a fan of any uh, crypto except for Bitcoin. So that's understandable. Sometimes people are, are blinded by their own uh, max uh, maximalist perspective, but you know that's his perspective. Anyways, that's the news. Let's dive into the uh, charts and uh, take a look. 
I screenshotted this uh, to give you an, an idea of where we are in the crypto um, cryptoverse. We have blood red uh, due to the um, activities in the stock market dragging this down and also announcement, hawkish announcement from uh, the Fed confirming a high potential for 50 basis point increase in the interest rate coming up. Anyways, Bitcoin 40.6K, dominance 41.07, Ethereum sitting around 3K, dominant, uh, down 2.49, dominance 19.27. Most everything else is red, including Luna. <laughs> so let's dive into the market cap here. Uh, market cap is down 2.21 at $1.88 trillion, and that's down from this morning also. Here's Ethereum, uh, market cap down in the 24 hour at 2.50, seven days down um, 0.91, but it's up in the 30, uh, 60, and 90 on the market cap, so that's good. Market cap's currently sitting at $362.35 billion. And it's uh, still number two. That's not going to change anytime soon. Uh, and we're into the um, the uh, trading view chart here, weekly time frame. Uh, what do we have? Uh, j just to review, uh, in case you missed the other um, weekly analysis. What we have here is the uh, descending triangle in the uh, yellow thick outline here, dashed lines here. We have the descending triangle resistance, descending triangle support here. So Ethereum recently bounced up against the resistance of the triangle and then it bounced down. On the way down, it crossed several crucial level, uh, crucial levels, indicator, whatever you want to call it. We have the bull market support band here, which is the, the gray ribbon here, the 50 day moving average. And uh, we have several lines that are drawn in here. We got the um, 3300 uh, it was support uh, support now it's become resistance and then we got this uh, FIP level 38.2 FIP level cr went through all that and it's currently sitting right here just above the um, support line at 2900 last week I said that it would chop between 29 um, 2900 and 3300 and it did do that uh, uh, and it remained on the lower end here uh, where it's currently at uh, so you got uh, three, 3K. So here's the last week's candle. You can see that 33K is up here. 29K, uh, K, 2900, sorry. Um, 3300 and 2900. So you see that wick, uh, that candle right there. Just rolled right between it. And this candle is hanging near the bottom of that range. Um, Ethereum, uh, so it now remains below those crucial levels and this is a confluence area you have a the fib 38.2 this uh really thin white line here you got the 50-day moving average you got the bull market support band all conflu uh combined right here intersecting right here just above this candle so what does that mean that mean that means that if this candle breaks above those levels and the 50-day moving average is at 3.18k. The um, bull market bull market support band is at mm, 3.1k, and the um, uh, the Fib 38 uh, 3820 is at 3.2k. So they're all pretty much priced around the same area. So that could become that is a resistance. All that if Ethereum w goes back up and and breaks through those uh, levels. That's huge, a uh, huge indicator of, of a bullish movement. And uh, if it breaks through the next level, which is thirty three hundred, and the tr but most of all the uh, triangle resistance here, because it's measuring the uh, lower um, the lower highs, if it breaks through those levels, it'll it'll be very bullish. So it's got a, a, some resistance up here. Down below, it's got in this uh, 2,900 support level. Uh, that's been pretty strong in the past. So that's where it's at. Uh, let's take a look at um, 
some uh, the volume. The volume here is uh, tiny. <laughs> it's so tiny, and um, it's below the uh, moving average for the uh, one fourth week in a row. Let's take a look at the um, KDJ indicator. The white J line here uh, continues to descend, trend down to 65, almost touching the blue uh, K and the red D lines here. I gave that a, a bear. And if you notice, it's moved out of the top of the range and it's moving into the middle of the range. So um, once it breaks through those two other lines, um, it'll be even more bearish. The uh, MACD is uh, continued to behave really strange. The white MACD line, this line right here, after crossing the red signal line, it literally lay on top, laid on top of it. I'll show you. You see that the white line, literally just like not even, not even a pixel, like just laying on top horizontally, and it's been doing that for three weeks. I haven't seen that before. <laughs> it's so strange. Anyways, um, because it's so close together, the uh, histogram bars are super thin. You can see that here. And it's currently at negative 78 and printed the uh, uh, third um, super tiny, thin, um, bullish histogram bar. So I gave that a crab because it's literally crabbing sideways. It's neither um, bullish or, or bearish. Down below we have RSI, CVD, and MOM. RSI is red, CVD is blue, and MOM is the white line. They all flip slightly back up, uh, with the MOM flipping even a little bit more than the others. RSI is at uh, 48. I gave that a bow and a crab, because even though it's turning up slightly, that's a bow, but it's mostly crabbing sideways. The aqua uh, cumulative volume delta line is uh, at 17.96 million. I gave it a bow and a crab too. The white momentum indicator is at 145. Uh, and I gave that a bow and a crab also. So combine all these together. What do we have? We have KDJ turning down. That's bearish. MACD is pretty much neutral. And uh, we have um, these indicators down here combined together uh, are more bullish. But more bullish with a crab. So it makes sense that this candle is really uh, uh, tiny and it's, it's bullish uh, currently right now. So it's more bullish. You can see here because you get three indicators down here being more slightly bullish than this. This one's bearish. This one's neutral. So there's a little bit more bullishness. That, that's why we have this. So what, what could it possibly do in the, um, you know, for the rest of this week and going into next week? Here's my summary. ETH is likely to chop between 29K, which is this um, this green line here, probably wick near there or, or around there, and then um, chop between there and this confluence area right here where the 50-day moving average, the bull market support band, and the um, it's FIB 38.2% line here. It's going to chop right in between there. And if it breaks below, that's bearish. If it breaks above those, that's a little bit more bullish. Notice though, the bull market support band is descending. And so is the 50-day um, moving average curving down. And so eventually they're gonna inter intersect. And so this pressure is coming down to force this to either break up above or force the uh, come uh, drop below. And uh, Max Payne, we're looking at roughly, um, and I'll show you the charts for these two. Max Payne uh, for uh, options uh, is going to be on 422. It's going to be uh, 3,050 on the 22nd, 3,100 on the 29th, 3K on the uh, May the 6th. It'll be 3K. Overall, I gave this um, chart just two crabs. I, I want to put a bowl in there, but uh, nah, it's it's more crabby. So let's dig through the um, here's um, just to show you the uh, max pain options max pain prices 3050 3100 3, uh, 3k here 3k here but we, we also want to consider the volume and the uh, open interest more importantly the open open interest but I'll show you volume anyways so volume is uh, our contracts that have already um, 
been filled and uh, open interest are contracts that are still open and pending. We can see that on the 20, uh, 22nd here, the closed contracts, uh, it's about medium range, but open contracts, not much to um, uh, not much to talk about. It's really small. So max payment for the um, 22nd, probably not going to be a factor um, to influence. Uh, option not going to be a factor to influence the price. However, the 29th, we have high volume already here and a pretty decent volume, uh, um, decent open interest here, about midpoint here. So 29th would be a day to um, be uh, thought mindful of the max paying price, at least for this range. And you can uh, check out the rest over here. It looks like May, June... June the 24th currently has really decent high open uh, interest here for calls. So, hope that helps. And uh, let's go take a look at uh, total value locked. Ethereum remains at number one. That's not going to change for a while. Um, but notice the um, one day, seven day, and one month change all down. And um, it's currently, uh, it's current TVL is 100 and 15.5 billion dollars. Uh, Terra Luna is um, about j just under four times below that. Um, and Mark, but notice Terra Luna though, it's got more green in the ranges here. Market cap to a TVL 3.14 roughly. Um, the lower the better. This is just slightly above the mid range um, for the top 20. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's about in the middle. I, th I would say, yeah, it's about in the middle, somewhat. Yeah. Let's take a look at the uh, detail um, total value locked here and you know, see the graph. Here is probably the max point here back in November the uh, 11th. It had a, Ethereum had $159.45 billion in TVL, and uh, it's dropped to uh, $115.5 billion. So... Uh, it's a that's a we're looking at what 40 some um, 44 billion dollars in uh, drop most crypto have dropped with the exception of like Luna and a couple others let's take a look at the heat map Ethereum is just too dense to be able to zoom out any further than this uh, as far as the height so uh, here's what we got sell walls on the top buy walls on the bottom 3,200 uh, is a um, decent sell wall here, but that's about the only big one up here in this range. Down below, we have more bigger, we have big buy walls. We got one here roughly around, um, that would say that just 29.50, just like around, just above 29.50, we have two walls here. And those just came in recently. And uh, 2,900, we got another wall there. 2,800, we got a wall there. 2,600, 2,500. And um, I didn't want to go any further below because it just takes, yeah, because we're not even down there yet. Uh, so here's the cumulative volume delta. Uh, in this range, since, um, let's see here, since the 1,400 hour on the 21st, and um, Mostly aggressive, uh, a slight aggressive uh, sell here. Uh, the red indicate aggressive sell. Those are market sells. They're going to sell at market price. Uh, the green means that uh, it's a um, market buys, and they're going to buy at market price. And that's different than the um, the limit buys and sells, which where you set the price and you wait for it to get filled. So that's why they're more aggressive when they're market selling or market buying. Here's the uh, liquidation uh, lo levels from Binance. And this only covers the extremely high leverage, 20 to uh, 100x. And uh, we have, um, these are uh, short levels up here. These are long levels down here. And the, uh, the amount of money in the short levels minus the amount of money in the uh, long levels or open interest. Um, you get this, and uh, this is negative two hundred and seventy-seven point seven three million dollars. The negative just means shorts, so we have excess short. So you take the money from the shorts minus the long, you get excess shorts here. That's all that means. And with this kind of um, 
cumulative liquidation delta level is not going to impact or influence whales or smart money to try to um, take a counter position to uh, impact price. But you notice here it was um, this downward movement here uh, wiping out some of these long liquidation levels here. All these got liquidated. Um, that's really, I don't think it's because of this. It's more macro factors impacting the uh, drop in price. And we're back to the beginning. I like this chart better. All right, feel free to uh, ask questions in the comment section or leave your thoughts. And uh, I appreciate your time. And uh, smash the like, ring my bell, hit subscribe if you haven't, and share my analysis uh, with um, your friends and family. Thanks. It's my last video for today. It is uh, almost midnight, 11.30 p.m. Pacific Coast time. All right, peace. See you tomorrow.